Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Devotions. My name is Pastor Tim Mason. I'm the Associate Pastor at Incarnation Lutheran Church. And I'd like to remind everybody that anybody can participate on our online activities by simply going to godamong.us, godamong.us, that's our website, and click on online activities. And there, from there, you can go to worship, Bible studies, check-ins, um, devotions, and more. And please share that information with your friends and family, um, especially during this pandemic time. Tonight I'm going to begin by reading Psalm chapter 27, verse 8. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. On Sunday we learned more about the word incarnation we learned about how the word, capital W, was enfleshed and tabernacled or camped among us. Um, John chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and lived among us. That's that tabernacling and camping with us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This word, capital W, is a powerful word. God created the universe and all good things through God's breath and the word. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. God is that word of grace and truth. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 reminds us that God is love. Our faith reminds us that through the love of God, the gifts of God can be found actually all around us. The gifts of God are um, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Notice words like money and the lottery and happiness are not on that list. Through my own life, these texts have been foundational in trying to live a life of faith and trying to walk as a discipline a disciple of Jesus to work to walk as a disciple of Jesus means to actively pay attention to my words and actions so that I'm disciplining my life words thoughts and actions to the practices we learned from Jesus as written in the gospels this doesn't mean that I should be out in the desert eating nothing but bugs and honey or living as a hermit, praying in a cave somewhere. Um, not to put these practices down, they have their place in all ministry. And actually, when walking through the Wadi Kelt, um, on my way to Jericho, I do believe it was, and I think some of us have done that, looking up the cliffs, I was able to see and wave to hermits that actually did pray in the caves. What it means to me is that the good news of the word incarnation tells me that I don't have to go anywhere to find Jesus. I don't have to go anywhere to talk to Jesus, or I don't have to even go anywhere to experience Jesus. Love, hope, joy, faith, patience, kindness have become flesh, and they live in the middle of our lives and all around us. All goodness all the goodness that we crave as human beings is not something to be sought or earned. It is as close to us as the air that we breathe. All we need to do is open our eyes, open our ears and our heart to this truth, this good news. The discipline that I choose is to learn to be aware of this amazing gift of God this gift of love constantly surrounding us and holding us at all times. Now, we're in the very beginning of a new year, and um, it's a time to try new things, um, stretch our faith, stretch our mind a little bit. Um, some people may laugh at me and my very simple faith, but that's okay. Um, I, I really don't care. Um, but when I wake up in the morning, I don't wonder um, what's going to happen today. Instead, I say, thank you, Jesus, for the sunrise and, and a new day. Where are you going to lead me today? Who are you going to introduce me to today? 
Jesus, what do you have in mind for me today? I can trust all these questions because I truly believe Jesus always knows what is best for me. And I just need to be aware of what comes my way. That doesn't mean I don't have a calendar. I kind of live and die by my iPhone and calendar. But even a calendar can't regulate the, pe the people who may call me or the people that I will meet as I call them or um, any kind of situation, good or bad, that I may have to face. I just know that I'm never alone. This way of living by faith rarely makes life easier. On the contrary, it forces me to see people as I believe um, Jesus would see all people. For example, the stranger next to me is not really a stranger. Um, that person is loved by Jesus just as much as I know that I am loved by Jesus. I just don't know that person's name yet. This way of thinking can also cause some painful feelings of compassion or injustice. When I see a homeless family or hear of a runaway teenager or hear of another bomb blast with countless casualties, or we see blatant abuse of the poor and powerless by all the powerful and comfortable in the wor world, my heart truly hurts. But this doesn't mean I seek the safety of burying my head in the sand. I pray for courage to say or do the right thing, but I al always do so in conversation with Jesus. And a life of faith doesn't guarantee a safe life at all. This year, <clears throat> I challenge you. I challenge you to seek the goodness of God at all times at your, of your life. In Eastern cultures, and I'm not talking about New York, um, there, is a, there is no separation of, for example, black and white, this or that, day and night, or sometimes even good and evil. Um, everything just is. And there's no way to separate yourself and your life from what just is. In the same way, we can't separate living according to faith when we would rather fold up our faith and put it away in a chest until next Sunday. You can't do that. There is no separation from what always is. Most of the Bible, and especially the Gospel of John, notice most of the texts I started with today were all from um, written by John, um, they are written with this kind of thinking in mind. Therefore, remember that in our true reality, it is impossible to live, walk, and work separate from God. Don't forget that. It's impossible to live separate from the love of God, the faith, hope, love, joy, patience, and kindness of God. We think we can split our days up into work time, work out time, free time, play time, rest time, time for errands, and even me time. Jesus says, yeah, whatever. I'm with you all the time. Talk to me. Walk with me. We'll finish by reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for being with me tonight. I hope there was something in there that was useful or helpful for you, just remember 
we cannot separate ourselves from the love of God. Um, we don't have that power. We can turn off hearing and learning, but no, God's always got a hold of us, surrounding us, and God is always calling us God's children. Good night, sleep well.